Okay, so we are now ready to load the flow cell. Um, to get this ready, uh, one of the things that's key is that the uh, flongle, it comes with its own set of buffers in these glass tubes. Uh, so they make a comment that um, these particular glass vials are, um, are better for the flongle. There's something in the plastic ones that might interfere with the sequencing quality. So you'll have a flongle expansion pack. Um, I've put it on my own case. We're gonna have that. We've got a flongle flow cell that's been uh, checked and uh, very important to verify on the back what type of flow cell this is, um, product code. You're gonna need that. And also if the product code does not match with the kit, um, then you'll get zero sequencing. So make sure that you're using the right um, flongle. I have used the wrong flongle in the past, so I know that from personal experience. Um, so first we need to prepare, we need to actually uh, load and flush the flongle. So in order to do that, um, it says that we need the sequencing, well, we actually need um, the flow cell flush. So you've got this, uh, flush buffer here, and uh, we need three microliters of the tether, which I've got here. So I've got this. And I'm gonna get 117 of the flush. And these are fine, not sitting on the ice, but I'll put them right back when I'm done. And just three microliters of the tether. I've spun, I've mixed it, I've spun it down. And just a, a nice mix tapping, and that is ready to load on the cell. I'm gonna put it aside as I then go into and change my setup a little bit to emphasize and let you see a little bit better what that looks like. I'm ready to load. I've got here my Minine device, and I can open that up there. Let me try to position it. And I also have one of the flongle adapters. So I definitely need the adapter inside. When I have that, um, you notice one, <laughs> don't touch the electronics that are on the back. We don't wanna touch any of those, but also if you notice the arrangement of the pins there, that is gonna stick into the device. So I sort of at an angle, uh, push it in. Actually, let me take out this, uh, sometimes I find this interferes with it. So let me take out the control cell, we don't need that and press down and pull that aside. That also has electronics, so I'm just gonna keep that up there. Okay, so I push that in at an angle until I feel it go in and then push down and it's all nice and secure. So that is in there. I have a fungal flow cell that I verified what the product number is. Um, product code, I'll need that and I made sure that everything matches with the kit that I'm using. Um, you wanna test the fungal flow cells before you actually load them. Um, the, I'll, I'll show that at some point, how to do that in a different video. But if the flow cell was below warranty, you wouldn't wanna use it and load a library onto it. Um, that's a bit risky. Okay, so I have the flow cell here. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in. And it also goes in at a bit of an angle till you feel it go in and then you press down, you'll hear a click. And that is uh, now in there. The flongel has this tape that's at the top. So with these gloves on, I've got to figure out if I can get my finger underneath of it.
this has so far been the hardest part of the whole procedure. Okay. <laughs> so I take the uh, tape and I peel it back. And then after, uh, you know, I pull it, pull it almost till it's over that flap, I can pull it up and it sort of just pulls away. And uh, I can press from the bottom and just sort of temporarily stick it there. Okay, I'm gonna shuck it a little bit. Um, that glass window or that little window there with the all liquid in it is actually uh, where the nanopores are in the device. So that little window here got a bit of a glare. Yeah, but that's, um, that's where the sequencing happens or where the nanopores are located. Um, but just above it is a little hole there, which is where I am going to um, go ahead and start loading. So um, according to the instructions here, I want to disperse 120 microliters of that. And uh, I need not the blue pipette, but the yellow pipette. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. I happen to have P100s. So I do 100 microliters or a little bit about 100 and go back in for it again if I need to. I've got my flush. And I let me just get the liquid in there. Let me tap this, get down to the bottom. Uh, the really key thing to do here is not by any means introduce any air bubbles. So you want to make sure your tip, there's no air bubbles in there. Okay, that tip goes directly into the hole. You can feel it kind of uh, fit its way in there. And then um, I don't press down on the pipette button, but rather I just turn, down, turn the volume down, which is the equivalent. When I'm doing this, and I'll try to do it a little bit in angles so I get that high resolution shot. Um, I shouldn't see any liquid pooling at the base of the tip, but rather in the pipette. And then actually uh, what you'll notice as you're doing that is that there'll be a little channel of liquid that'll start flowing up the side there, which is evidence that the fluidics are doing the right thing, that the liquid is being dispensed. So without trying to give you the best angle that I can, that liquid will continue to move up the sides. And I want to make sure that as I'm doing this pipetting, that I stop way short of, of running the risk of putting air into the system. So I'm going to stop there because I have actually more liquid I want to disperse. I'm just going to go ahead and grab that extra liquid so I get the full 120. Sometimes I even add like a little drop at the end just to make sure that I'm not going to risk having air bubbles. Okay, that liquid's going to come all the way around just a little bit. Not full the way around, but I'm definitely watching it. And I'm stopping a few microliters before I get to the chance of having any air bubbles in there. Okay. Excellent, I think. All right, let me get rid of that. And now I'm ready to prepare the final solution for loading. So to that, I need 15 microliters of sequencing buffer. And again, try to do this in the order it recommends. Ten of the library beads. Now the beads, 
uh, they settle, it's little glass beads. Uh, so you wanna do that, wanna mix them up right before you add them in. It's a nice milky solution. I need 10 microliters of that. And finally, uh, five microliters of the library. I'll put that back on ice um, because it can be used if I need it to load again or something was wrong with my flow cell. I do have well in this case they give you enough for one, but you could make more if you needed something went wrong with the flow cell. Which I've had to do. Okay. I added that in. I'll give it a quick mix by pipette just before I load this 20 microliters. Right, let me just check on page two. Yep. There's nothing else. There is it. There was another page, but I want to make sure. Okay. And this should be just as uh, just as you loaded the first one. Okay, so I've got 20 microliters here. And you wanna make sure that there's no air at the bottom. And you put the tip in, you'll feel the tip uh, match with the bottom and then you go ahead and slowly de depress it. When you do that, you may actually note um, the beads. You'd be able to see the beads flow onto the flow cell sometimes. Okay. I'm stopping and not worrying about that last half microliter. Don't want air. Okay, then I take this tape and I replace it. So I kind of seal it over that way, then fold it back over itself. And press it down. And that is ready, ready to load.